Well, hey folks, real honesty with John Ritlin. I'm John Ritlin, and this is Rapid Fire episode 57. It's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a mean one as far as you know some of my rants. It's going to be some positives, and there's going to be a special rant slash reflection at the end of the video, towards the end of the video. I will put a um, <clears throat> a time code in the description if you just want to see that. But I would like it, like like to know your opinion on the rest of the topics I'm going to talk about. The uh, special video, special little piece at the end is going to be about Miss Elizabeth and my personal disdain for Lex Luger. And it will be the last time I will talk about Lex Luger unless he does something monumentally stupid. Just, I, 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 I have to move on from that kind of stuff. This will be like my, my grand finale as far as talking about Luger. So, first, some Saudi, some fallout from the Saudi Arabia show, the greatest Royal Rumble, and by the way, if you haven't seen my review slash rant of that, feel free to check that out. It, as of this recording, is about 400 views, and I certainly appreciate everybody for watching my videos. I, I really, really do, but this is going to have some Saudi Arabia fallout, and a personal reason as to why I'm wearing this shirt, and those of you that didn't like the equality shirt that I wore on the Saudi Arabia show, sorry, but fuck you. It's my show. I'm allowed to wear what I want. If you don't like, you know, equal equal rights for all, that's your problem. Go go stick your head in the sand or go live underground or something like that because that's basically where you belong. I'm not saying that everybody needs to like, oh, every, you need to fall in line or this kind of stuff. But if you can't accept the people want to sleep <clears throat> with the same gender or sleep with both, whatever, then deal with it. Anyway, so first... Um, Ari Davari issues an apology for the skit that he was involved in at the Greatest Royal Rumble. For those that aren't aware, for those that forgot about it, there were some Saudi Arabia recruits that handled themselves really, really, really well. I actually wish the best for these guys. Um, they were they were cutting promos and stuff like that, and then Ari Davari and his older brother Sean Davari, who was Muhammad Hassan's spokesperson, Mark Henry's spokesperson, he was in an impact for a while as Sheikh Abdul Pasir. And then was all Basir, I believe, and then had a brief stint in Impact Wrestling. They both appeared; they're of Iranian descent. The relation, the the relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran are well documented. And Google them if you're not aware. I'm not going to go into that stuff right here. Let's just say it's tense at best. Let, let's just say that much. He apologized because <clears throat> they were out waving the Iranian flag and doing all this stuff and everything. But the fans, the vast majority of the fans seemed to get the fact that it was a skit. And he did not need to issue an apology. Unless the Saudi Arabia government, you know, forced WWE to say, you need to have that guy issue an apology. We're throwing all this money at you instead of giving it to our citizens or giving it towards education for better rights. We're going to give you all this money, but you have to apologize for anything that you do that we don't like. To be fair, they were in in um, their country. So they do have to respect their customs, whether we agree with them or not. And by we, I mean, you know, people with a working brain. Sorry if you think that it's okay to, to uh, keep women down and keep gay people down. There is something wrong with you. Arya Davari should not have to apologize. I like Arya Davari. I think he's a very good performer. I think his brother, Sean Davari, was very underutilized and could have been used a whole lot better. Um, Impact, I think, used him pretty damn well. Lucha Underground used him very, very briefly. I don't remember him being on that many shows. But the Davari brothers should have not need to apologize, especially Arya. But hey, what he did, probably need to save his job, so okay. I wish nothing but the best for Arya Davari. Honestly, I do. I think he's a great performer. Shouldn't have had to apologize. It was a skit. That's all it was. It was a skit, and the vast majority of the fans seemed to be buying into it. Sure, there might have been some hurling some damn insults at at, at uh, the Davari brothers. Probably, that wouldn't be any different than a lot of um shows. I've been to shows in Seattle where you've heard... Fans, mostly drunk and mostly stupid and mostly inbred, yelling at <coughs> various people. Like we had a bunch of like ask ask the Dur the Durbinator and and myself about the drunk people that were behind us at the most recent SmackDown we were at. Uh, that was back in October. Um, no, it was October. It was late October, early November. But I think it was late October. But anyway, the whole point is is that. There's going to be belligerent fans everywhere. The whole point is Davari should have not had to apologize at all. But he did. It is what it is. I just think it's stupid because it was a skit. It wasn't like he was taking the Saudi Arabia flag, laying it on the ground, and shade on it. If he did that, then okay. I mean, then, well, then he probably would have been chased to the damn airport and probably been chased on the damn plane. But 
he did it was a skit. That's all it was. He shouldn't have had to have done anything else on it. Now, <clears throat> apparently some talents were reportedly uncomfortable, unhappy with the with going to the Saudi Arabia show and being part of it. I understand that. I respect that. You do have to respect their customs if you're going to go over there. They did it as a job. They did, you know, knowing that they had to do it, even though WWE said that, oh, if you don't want to go, you don't have to go. I'm willing to bet the WWE said, yeah, you don't have to go if you don't want to go, but if you don't go, we're probably going to de-push you. And that's probably why so many damn people went, including a few people that I hadn't heard of. And a few people I hadn't seen in a damn while, but hey, whatever. And they, they did have some nice returns for the Rumble. By the way, again, check out my Rumble review if you really want to know my full thoughts on that. It was a nearly 33-minute video, and I had probably about 40% wrestling coverage and 60% ranting, but people like my rants. Especially because, and I do want to say this much, this is going to lead into the other topics I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> I get why some talents were uncomfortable with it, especially with how women are perceived over there. Now, yes, they are, you know, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia and others are pushing for progressive change to make women, you know, more of an integral integral part of society. I mean, I, I make my jokes a lot about, you know, men, women, and uh, various, various people. Just in general, it's what I do. It's how I deal with tragedy. It's how I deal with stuff. You know, just any sadness or any kind of anger or stuff like that, I can channel it into jokes sometimes. But for a country that didn't want women's wrestling at all, not that kind of stuff in WWE that's been promoting their women's revolution. And the women have been putting on some stellar matches. One could argue that the women that women were involved in two of the best matches at WrestleMania this year. Yes, one of those was Stephanie, who is not a full-time performer or even really any good at anything she does. But it was great storytelling. And Ronda Rousey did well in her debut. Charlotte Nasca did great. Did had a fantastic match. Goofy finish or you know breaking of the streak aside, whatever. <clears throat> Still, great in ring performances. Great storytelling. The women have been doing st have been having stellar performances for a number of years, especially in NXT and especially up to the main roster. Kind of once they got rid you know got the title off of Nikki Bella. And I'm not knocking Nikki Bella, but it was a transition to Charlotte. And no, that's not a joke about. Charlotte being the Charlotte being the champion, and okay, it took a while for them to really start booking the women correctly. And you could a whole other rant is the women deserving to be paid a lot more than they are. Which, if you look in the Forbes and stuff like that, and in the other other articles, apparently the women aren't paid all that well. But for a country that doesn't view women all that well, and especially doesn't view gay people all that well, or at least the government doesn't seem to. I don't know about the citizens. I don't really care. I'm not going to speak for the citizens. The government doesn't speak for the citizens, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I say that in spite of the fact that there are a load of hateful, moronic people here that still support the pile of Cheetos in a loose-fitting tie and a suit that, that somehow is controlling and running this country into the ground, and I will fight any of you face-to-face -face if you disagree. I mean, I won't. I'll fight you with words because I don't fight with action. The whole point of this is the women, WWE is pushing their women's revolution. You have Balor Club is for everyone, the inclusion, the inclusion shirt and stuff like that. And then they go to Saudi Arabia and it's like, it's like just a slap in the face right there. It just slaps them. It's, it's slapping them repeatedly. It's slapping every single woman that worked to get WWE to this point. It's slapping every, well, I mean, okay, the ones that actually tried to work. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not crediting Sable there. Um... And no, I'm not going to pick on Eva Marie because, again, even though I don't care for Eva Marie, Eva Marie, took, Eva Marie did, wasn't good at it, but she took bumps. So she's better than Sable right there. But the whole point is women do not deserve to be disrespected in this country or any country. Jokes should be made about everybody. I mean, I'm sorry. If you can't take a joke, you, should, you just shouldn't be one on social media. You ne also need to develop a sense of humor. And anyway, I mean, I, I get joked about a lot, and I just learned to take it because... They're jokes. If you can't be open to criticism or can't be open to jokes, there's a problem there. But the talents that we're unhappy about, I don't blame them. I don't blame them one bit. I imagine that the women were probably upset. At the same time, I imagine that some of the women might have been relieved they weren't going to go there due to the fact of how women are viewed. They might have been viewed as targets or felt that they would be viewed as targets. So thankfully, the women were kept safe. Since security and stuff like that may have been an issue with the turbulent time for women and gay rights over uh, women's rights and gay rights over there 
But do I blame Towns for being unhappy? Absolutely not. They should have been unhappy and they should have been allowed to um, stay home if they wanted. But again, they probably would have been de-pushed and maybe some money would have been held back and stuff like that. Now, WWE did get a boatload of money from Saudi Arabia. But it was at the expense of the whole inclusion thing of, you know, the Balor Club is for everyone. And for women's wrestlers and also for gay, for gay wrestlers. I mean, they have Sony Deville, an openly gay wrestler. That's great. Openly lesbian. That's fantastic. More people should be who they are. Bottom line is they really, really should be. Which leads to another thing that I've seen. Apparently, uh, Sonya Deville and Zara Schreiber, or Schreiber, I forget how to pronounce it, the, um, <clears throat> the woman that was involved with Seth back in 2015, that, um, you know, whatever, that kind of stuff, and she was the one that got fired for having pics in 2012 on her Instagram of Nazi stuff. She has owed up to that and has grown up since, and I'm not, I'm not going to hammer on that, okay? It was a stupid thing to do. We all did stupid things when we were younger. I made a video about, po about positive, positively changing for the better as opposed to positively changing for the worse, where I talked about how I used to be incredibly racist and homophobic. And that's why I want to speak out on this kind of stuff, because I know what it's like to be that hateful and to be that stupid, and it is moronic that people are like that. So... Fans that are hating on Sonya Deville and Zara for Sonya and Zara for being in a relationship. One, I didn't even I didn't even know they were together until somebody had told me, and I go, and I had to think about it because I had to think about the name because I was like Zara, Zara, Shreve, Zara. Zara. Oh, oh, the one that was with Seth and that kind of stuff, and had the had the um, <clears throat> the controversy and has since evolved, has since you know grown up from that, and that's great. Oh, they're happy. That was my exact reaction. Cool. Good for them. This is something that people need to remember. If it's between a grown adult and another grown adult, or a teenager and a teenager, this kind of stuff, um, as long as it's not between an adult and a child, like that kind of stuff, you know, like a Jerry Sandusky Penn State situation, or, you know, any kind of pedophilia, or um, bestiality, and that's what some people have compared, you know, gay gay relationships to is bestiality and you fuckers are stupid. I did see people tweet out stuff like that. And I don't remember the exact Twitter handles. I wish I had taken screenshots of this. The people probably either got their accounts taken away or they at least delete their tweets. Oh, Sonians are, uh, they're together, this kind of stuff or whatever. It's, uh, some people call it a sin against God. To quote the perfect circle Judith song, Fuck your God. Um, and by the way, I don't really care if you guys have a problem. I know that's not the actual meaning of the song. I'm just taking the lyric out of context. Because if you're going to take stuff from the Bible out of context, I'm going to take stuff out of context and throw it back at your face. You guys can believe what you want. If religion helps you out and you use religion in a positive way, I am very happy for you. You should be able to. You should be able to make sure that, oh, everything is everything is good and that, you know, you use things for a positive change. But if you're going to use it as a tool of hate, then guess what? All you're going to breathe is more hate. So, yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, I'm contradicting myself with how angry I got right there. But for those saying, oh, Sonians are, it's terrible, this kind of stuff, they shouldn't be together. Why? If they're happy together, who the fuck cares? If it ends up in a messy breakup, okay, then they move on, they find other people. If they're happy together, good. Don't hate them because they're together. Don't hate them because they're two women together. What the fuck difference does it make to you? Is it going to affect you? Are you going to clutch your rosary? Are you going to clutch your Bible closer to you because that's going to make you feel better? You can't accept the two people are happy together? The Doesn't it teach you to love your fellow man, love your fellow woman? Doesn't it? So why don't you do that? It's not that fucking hard, is it? Seriously. Personal feelings aside on, I mean, I think Sonya's a great talent, and I think Sonya's going to do very, very well in, in wrestling. Zara, I had said my piece on her, and I have I don't harbor any ill will towards anything that she had done before and stuff that I had seen on her, on her social media. I have come to grips with the fact that I need to also stop hating people, you know, getting so angry at people for stuff they did when they were younger, like when they maybe when they were misinformed and this kind of stuff. And I'm not excusing it, but to say, hey, people can actually change. That's going to be contradicted a little bit in the little rant that I said later, but it's a little bit worse of a crime. Stop hating on Sonya and Zara if they're together. They're happy, great. 
ain't gonna fucking affect you. And especially for Sonia, do you? Do, I have talked to plenty of my friends that are gay, lesbian, bi, trans. That, do you know how hard it is even now for the for people that are any of them are any are any of those four things to you know for you know lifestyles to find to mindsets whatever you want to call it to find any kind of person that's willing to accept them even in this day and age of inclusion this kind of stuff is rights tend to go better tend to go more forward you know how hard that is you know how hard that is for them i mean and i mean i don't only i just only know based on how they talk but it's just it's sad it's sad that that's how they feel that they that they feel that they can't be accepted just because they were born this way and by the way you're born that way if you don't think so that's your problem and no amount of shock therapy oh by the way fuck you mike pence and by the way fuck the fact that you call your wife mother you are a sick freak and then again most people that take religion that way are sick freaks yeah and i'm going to say that and this, this this rant's going a little bit off but it's going to be a good rant so don't hate on sonia and Zara for being together, especially because whether, however you feel about either of them, let them be happy together. Seriously, they deserve to be happy together. And now I'm going to go to another section of fans that are shaming, they're slamming female talent and gay talent. Well, they're slamming female fans and female talents and gay fans and gay talents. I don't care if you're gay, straight, whatever. And you watch wrestling. If you're cool with me, I'm not going. I'm not going to hate on you at all. We don't have to agree on the same wrestlers. We don't have to agree on the same storylines being the best, or being the worst, or which wrestlers are the best or the worst. If you're cool with me, I'm not going to care. You sleep with who you want to sleep with, as long as they're of legal age. <laughs> that, that, that's the only uh, thing I have. <clears throat> as long as they're actually human, you know. Again, no bestiality thing. You know, sleeping with animals wrong, but bestiality is not the same as a gay relationship. For those that still say that, you're fucking wrong. But those that slam on female fans. I don't... It, they say, oh, female fans are misinformed. Female fans are just there looking at the... <laughs> Hang on, I'm trying to... Trying to female, fans are, female fans are just there for the... for the... for the, you know, muscled up guys in tights. Or for the women if they happen to swing that way. Or the gay, or the gay, you know, fans. Or as Styles would say, the gay community. You're a great wrestler, Styles, but you're proof of why Georgia deserves the stereotypes it gets. I'm sorry to my friends in Georgia that are there. There are certain people in Georgia that do not fit those stereotypes. But AJ is proof of that stereotypes exist for a reason. Still, the gay community. I, I seriously just he should have been slapped for that. <clears throat> Great wrestler though, one of the best in the world. Um, but those who slam on the gay fans, oh, they're only there for the guys because they get off on, or they're only with, they're only there to watch the women because they get off on that. Okay, here's the thing: those that say, and oh, gay fans don't belong in wrestling, or gay wrestlers don't belong in wrestling. I've seen those takes too. Okay. These are mostly guys saying this, by the way. In fact, it's pretty much 100% guys. So you say that. You're watching a sport where guys are in tights, you know, tights, oiled up, muscled up and everything, wrestling around and, and trying to submit each other on a mat. You're watching that where they're, they're all oiled up and, you know, pounding each other and trying to keep each other down for the three count or trying to submit each other or trying to cause pain, inflict pain, and all this kind of stuff. And yet, you think that gay fans are the problem. No, they're not. People that actually enjoy the wrestling product are not the problem. Those that hate other fans for enjoying it are definitely the problem. And that's something I just can't fucking understand. Why in the world are people like this? Are people that inherently stupid? Yes would be the short answer. Like, honestly... Well, and what does it matter if a woman's just watching based on looks anyway? You start, you start with your eyes. You see something first with your eyes. You embrace something by sight. You know, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you'll hear something, you'll hear about wrestling, but you first will see it before you hear it. And if an image hooks you, and if you're a female, or if you're a gay man, or if you're a gay woman, and it happens to catch... 
your eye that is a certain member of the same or opposite sex that appeals to you and you and you watch it and you eventually get hooked and learn to love the business okay what does it matter if you start out being attracted to a certain wrestler and that's what hooks you okay cool the important thing is, is you're finding a medium, you're finding a form of entertainment that it's giving you a lot of, that is giving, that is giving you something to root for, something to enjoy, something to be passionate about. <laughs> and that's, this is just the thing that makes my head want to goddamn explode. Just the fucking thing that makes my head want to explode. You hate female fans. Why? Why? Women can enjoy wrestling too. I hate gay people enjoying wrestling. Why? They're human beings too. We should all be allowed to enjoy that. If we can't, as the wrestling community, the wrestling fan community, if we can't come together and be more positive, like, you know, and positively influence people more, that's a bit of a problem. Now, have I ranted on various wrestling fandoms? Yes, I will so in the future. I will rant on Roman Reigns fans, not stopping the bitching. But they're also allowed to feel the way that they want. If they're passionate about the product. That's the whole thing. If you're passionate about the product and you're not just being a fake fan, I ranted on fake fans before. If you actually care about it and care about the wrestlers and don't want wrestlers to be hurt in this kind of stuff, if you get caught up in it, it's fine or whatever, but if you're just constantly tweeting that you hope somebody gets hurt or hope somebody dies, one, you need help, two, you don't deserve social media. But also if you're going to bash women, women deserve to enjoy wrestling too. So do gay people. So do straight people. So do bi people. What does it matter? We're all people. Let us fucking enjoy the goddamn sport. Who the fuck cares who we sleep with or whatever? Just let us enjoy the sport as a group of people. We're all in this together. If we can make wrestling better, WWE, New Japan, PWG, Ring of Honor, Impact. I mean, Impact. I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to joke about Impact. If Impact, if Impact can get better, great. Important. Important thing. All these indie promotions, all these promotions in the UK and Europe, Stardom in Japan. I believe Stardom's in Japan. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Shimmer, I know, is doing very well here in the US. The whole point is all these companies, if all these fans can be cool with each other, we could do some great goddamn things. So let's do that more. Let's not pick on the fact that they're female or they're gay or they're bi. Who the fuck cares? Remember this. And I'll be right back, folks, with the rant about Miss Elizabeth and Lex Luger. Be right back. I changed my shirt to the Macho Man, yeah, Randy Savage, because Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth were basically attached at the hip. Now, you can talk about all the stuff that happened with their relationship. Yes, Randy kept her way too close to him. He was too, a little too overprotective. I don't blame him. She was a beautiful woman. I don't blame him for wanting to protect her, but the way he did it went went the wrong way. I'm not knocking Randy. He's one of my favorite stars of all time. But I can see, you know, hearing recounts of it, okay, maybe the relationship had the best intentions, but maybe it didn't go so well. I still want to believe they did reunite high above, and whether I believe that or not, I believe they believed it, and I'm sure that they did. And I think that would be great, but... Miss Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth, Bella Elizabeth, if you will. Sorry, I was being like Dusty Rose today. But Liz, I'm just going to say Liz. First wrestling crush. Beautiful woman, elegant, carried herself with class. Um, <clears throat> was great for the time period that she came in at. And really redefined what a woman's role in WWE was. People say in wrestling, but you know, you had Baby Doll and Pre you had Precious and Sunshine and World Class. You had Baby Doll and um, and Crockett Promotions. You had a lot of women. You had Wendy Richter. You had Mula, and I did a rant on Mula, by the way, is that before they had changed the name of the uh, WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. You can look back on this playlist or whatever and find that out. But yeah, I did that, and that was fun. But I did that at the Derbs place. And I'm not doing this at the Derbs place, so there's gonna be no there's gonna be no music and I probably wouldn't even want music included as much as I love it and as much as it adds to it. I want this to just be straight and to the point. When Miss Elizabeth and Randy said when Liz and Randy divorced, I gotta stop saying Miss Elizabeth. 
because I'm screwing it up so bad. When they divorced, I mean, I was only 11 at the time. So I didn't even learn until years later that they were divorced. Because at the time, you know, there was really no internet. There was really no big internet and that kind of stuff. But when I found out they had divorced, I remember being upset. I remember being upset at the end of Mrs. Doubtfire because Robin Williams and, you know, uh, his wife's character, I, for, I think it was Sally Field. They had got, I think it was her? <laughs> I don't remember. Maybe not. But the whole point is when the husband and wife didn't get back to, get, or when they didn't get back together, the mom and dad didn't get back together. I remember being upset because the first time that's been one of the first times I had experienced that kind of thing. And I carried that with me when I thought about Randy and Miss Elizabeth divorcing. Okay. So they divorced this kind of stuff or whatever. Well, she ended up remarrying, but then she ended up getting hooked up with Lex Luger. Now, I have never cared for Lex Luger, as many of you have, made, have known. I have actually actively said that he is one of the dumbest fucking wrestlers on the face of the planet. Couldn't cut a goddamn promo. Um, <clears throat> had a forehead, had a forehead where you probably could have drawn the map of Texas on it. And he generally sold everything like he got shot. And of course, that was back when he still had his legs under him. And I'm sorry, it's kind of karma that Lex, for all the big build that he had and all the, all the muscles and all that stuff, and the way that he was such a dick to fans and this kind of stuff, and the way he was such a prick, and the way he was a prick to some people, and when he abused Miss Elizabeth, when he abused Liz... And he did. He never recounted it in his book. But police reports are there. He abused her. He hit her. I'm not saying that Liz was a saint. Because I didn't know her. I didn't know Lex either. I've never known any wrestler, unfortunately. Shout out to my friend Karen, who did meet um, Randy Savage. Who apparently said he was one of the nicest people she'd ever met. And I heard Randy Savage was gracious to his fans. I'm lisping over a lot of S's here. But, whole point. Lex Luger killed Miss Elizabeth. And on this day, 15 years ago, when she was found dead, I remember being horrified. Absolutely fucking horrified. She was 42, 43 years old. Taken at that point. And the toxicity reports of what was in her system. And I, I encourage everybody to Google and figure this stuff out and everything, because I'm not going to recount all this legal activity. But the whole point is, Lex Luger killed her. Whether he inadvertently or inadvertently did it, he fucking killed her. And I can't wait until karma catches this worthless God, you know, God promoting piece of shit. And I'm sorry, I'm not saying the people that are born again are bad people. I'm not saying you are. But you're supposed to come clean when you're born again. And he didn't. He didn't fully come clean. Oh, he spoke to God. He probably admitted the stuff that he did and he was forgiven. Okay. He still did what he did. Didn't admit it in his book. And because of him, whether he put the pills and booze in her hand, whether he put them down her throat and force fed her, whether he left her unattended and she did that stuff because she was depressed. I don't know what happened. I don't know all the stuff that happened because according to police reports, that, that stuff can say that. I wasn't there. But I can tell with my eyes that Lex Luger is not a genuine human being, which is ironic given I believe his Twitter handle is genuine Lex Luger. I don't believe that for a goddamn second. And he somehow has a job at WWE again, I believe, working as a consultant on their wellness policy, which is funny given how many roids that dumb piece of shit did. So, Miss Elizabeth... Liz deserves to be honored as one of the pioneers in women's, you know, in, in for women in wrestling. And it is unfortunate that the end of her life came at the, you know, at the hand of a stupid, roided up, moronic, not undeserving, talentless piece of shit like Lex Luger. That that happened. And Lex, you're never going to see Liz again. Because if there is a heaven and a hell, you're not going up. You're going down for what you did. And I know that I myself will laugh at that. I don't celebrate the deaths of people. But when karma does get Lex, I mean, I'm sorry. Him being in the condition he is, is not karma. Because of what he did to Liz. Again, she is her own person and she made her own decisions. 
But at the same time, Liz should still be here. She should be in the Hall of Fame. She should be living her life. And because of Lex Luger, she isn't. And I will never forgive Lex Luger for that. I would tell him this to his goddamn face and say, what are you going to do, Lex? You're not going to do anything. You're a shriveled up piece of shit that never deserved the money you got in the wrestling business. People put you over like you were the next coming of Hulk Hogan, and at least Hogan had charisma. What do you have, Lex? A body, a metal plate in your forearm, and a forehead that wouldn't quit. And you had a best friend in Sting. Sting saw something like Lex, and okay, I'm not going to debate that. We try to see the best in some people that maybe aren't exactly the best people in the world. And I'm not saying I'm the best person in the world because I've never claimed to be. But one thing I know is I've never killed someone. I've never killed a woman especially. Lex did. Inadvertently or inadvertently. And he will have to pay for that one day. So Miss Elizabeth, I hope, can rest in peace. I hope she can rest in peace. I hope she's rested in peace for 15 years. I hope her and Randy, if there is a heaven, that they are high above and they are enjoying what they are enjoying their time together. Imagine those matches being called up there by Gorilla Monsoon, Bobby He, and so many others. And we're stuck with Lex because sometimes as wrestling fans, we can't have nice things. So rest in peace, Liz. And Lex Luger, <laughs> fuck you and fuck everything that you did in the wrestling business. You never deserved what you got. And I'm glad your career flamed out. So check out, so by the way, folks, Twitter handle's in the description. Like, share, subscribe also. It's been Real Honesty with John Rithlin. I'm John Rithlin, and I'll see you soon.